Hey guys, if you watched my last video, in that video I shared my thoughts on all of the winter and heritage classic jerseys worn up until this past 2015-16 season. And originally I had planned, I actually made a video that was about 47 minutes in length that also talked about the stadium series, which I did not mention in the last video. However, because I was so focused on trying to keep, keep the video under an hour's length, not only what did I find that the video was way too long, but I felt that it was missing any good information. It was lacking in interesting facts. And honestly, I'd rather have two videos where they have a little bit of substance and some interesting facts rather than one really long video that has no substance to it. And actually, I made a second part video already, but here's what happened. My computer started to have major technical difficulties where it would randomly shut off on the spot and just shut down. And it's been a very frustrating past couple of weeks as a result. And lately, I tried to... I gave up on trying to convert my video file after I edited the second part of this two-part series that I've been working on. So I made the video and then I went to convert it into a file that's uploadable for YouTube. And all of a sudden, the computer was shutting off once it was 50 or so percent uploaded and converted to the other file. So it wasn't working. Then I decided, you know what? If it, this is the case, why don't I actually play the video and video the video as it's playing? Where I'd be filming the video with my camera while the video is playing from my computer. But now I can't even access that second part video any longer because my computer wants me to uh, wait for it to upload the files yet again. So you know what? I just said forget about it. So unfortunately, because I can no longer play that video, I have to start from scratch. And this is why it's taken so long to get the second part finally uploaded on my channel. Which has been very frustrating. And that's the bad news. But the good news is that because I've spent so much time working on this video, thankfully I remember everything that I talked about in that video. So, with that... I'm going to carry on from where I left off last time. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on all of the Stadium Series jerseys worn up until this past 2015-16 season. So, I'm going to carry on from where I left off, which was this Heritage Classic game between the Senators and Millionaires. Just kidding. Canucks. <laughs> and one thing I loved about this game that I forgot to mention, actually... I think I mentioned it, it could be wrong. But it's got a bit of something to do with the 2013-14 season Stadium Series games, and it's that it was nice to see a game without a white jersey for a change. And speaking of that, I'm going to go to the very first Stadium Series game between the Kings and the Ducks, which instead of a white jersey, Los Angeles had a gray one, and I thought it was really, really nice. So speaking of that jersey, I'm going to just start with the Kings. Now, the thing is, I honestly believe that Los Angeles should have made this their third jersey. I thought it was a nice jersey, and even with an unconventional color being gray, which I know it's a shade, sorry guys, and with a new Stadium Series jersey template, I thought that the Kings did a really good job of having a more traditional look with arm and waist striping, and I thought it also had a very nice balance of gray and black. And to be honest, I thought it was really cool that the Kings had a logo that was a shiny chromed crown. Because in real life, crowns are shiny. So I thought that was really, really clever on the Kings part. And overall, I thought this was a good jersey. And I think it's a shame that they never brought it back. And this, alongside their gold throwback, Los Angeles would have two really, really nice third jerseys. Or, pardon me, alternate jerseys. So, 
I thought that was a bit disappointing. But anyways. Okay, sorry about that, guys. So, anyways, I'm going to carry on with the Anaheim Ducks. So, I thought that this Ducks jersey for the one special game that they wore it was not too bad because I thought it was so nice to finally see the Ducks in an orange jersey after going with the whole black, gold, orange, and white color scheme after they rebranded from the Mighty Ducks to the Ducks. And with how boring their original Anaheim Duck jerseys were, I thought it was so refreshing to finally see an orange jersey. But the only problem I had with it was that it was way too plain. It had I, I did not like the side panels, and with the cutoff with the little cutoff stripes on the arms, I thought this was a little bit of an overglorified practice jersey. I mean look at it, it's very plain, it's very dull. And that's also something I did not like about this chromed logo, was that it gave it a bit of a bit of a dull look, where in the King's case, the chromed crest did not appear to be dull. And as for the Stux one, unfortunately, that wasn't as good. And I thought that, you know, I thought it was funny when people dubbed it as the orange, as a quote unquote, an orange county jumpsuit, because you know what? <laughs> I, I'm not going to lie. I actually thought they made a pretty good point when they said that. But the problem that I had with it was that it's just way too plain. And I hated the chromed Ducks logo. It just did not look right. But one good thing I did like about this jersey, of course, besides being orange, was that the OC initials on the shoulder, on the one shoulder for Orange County, formed a bit of a duck shape. And I thought that was really cool. But one good thing about this uniform was that when the Ducks just brought out their Mighty Ducks orange jersey, I was so glad that they did not bring this one out because if you ever watched my very first video, I mentioned back then over a year ago now that I would have been very disappointed if the Ducks would have made this and I felt they needed to do something better and I'm so glad that they brought that Ducks jersey out because not only is it much better than this, but I think it's actually good enough to eventually replace their current home jersey and honestly, I think it's a hell of a lot better than that one is. Even though I do like their road jersey, I, do, I don't mind it. I think it's actually not a bad uniform. But anyways, I'm going to move on. So I also like that this was a gray versus orange matchup and did not have a white jersey. So going along with this, um, it's nice to have two teams wearing, not having a white jersey in a game for a change type situation. And to add to that, um, so really in this 2013-14 season, we had Detroit and Toronto in red versus blue. We had the Kings and Ducks in gray versus orange. And we also had the Senators and Canucks in burgundy versus vintage white, or as some people say, cream. Now I would have, honestly, I would have really liked to have seen this also be a color versus color game. Because even though I thought this Pittsburgh Penguins jersey was a hell of a lot better than the road jersey they thankfully just retired after just winning the Stanley Cup a couple months ago against San Jose as of this video. I thought this jersey was a huge step up from that old road jersey that's now been thankfully retired. And it's about time as far as I'm concerned. But anyways, Pittsburgh only had this jersey for one game. And I wish they would have made it Vegas gold because... Pittsburgh used Vegas gold instead of the Pittsburgh gold they've just gone back to for the upcoming 2016-17 season for over a decade. I think about 15 years now. Correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, I think it would have been nice to see Pittsburgh go with a Vegas gold jersey for this one special game. I think it would have been much better and it would have been something real special because we've never had an NHL jersey that's Vegas gold in color and I think that would have been a nice change and to have another color versus color game between black versus Vegas gold that would have been something and as far as I'm concerned with these new stadium series templates it would have made this game a lot more memorable 
And to be honest, I thought that the chromed penguins logo with the Vegas gold triangle was actually pretty clever as well as the crown because I thought that it was cool to have a shiny gold logo because hey, in real life, as I said with the crown, just like crowns, bars of gold are shiny. So I thought that would have been a cool thing to play off of. But even as I say that though, I thought the white jersey was pretty nice for one game, even though I wish it was Vegas gold. But the one thing I hated about Pittsburgh Stadium Series jersey was that the socks looked like something that I'd expect to see players wear for a practice. Because if you see here, the sock striping was on the sides of the socks and not all the way around. Like, what the hell was up with the decision making there? I mean, just because you cut the stripes off on the arms, which was a bit of a bummer too, doesn't mean you cut them off on the socks. In fact, Ottawa tried that in the 0708 season, and before long, they went back to traditional sock striping. True story. But anyways, I'm going to move on to the Chicago Blackhawks 2013-14 uh, season stadium series jersey. Because, first off, I thought it was nice that Chicago brought this jersey back. Because I've always thought that until they brought out that beautiful 2009 Winter Classic jersey, that this was a really good third jersey for Chicago. So I thought it was nice to see it come back. But I don't like the way that Chicago cut off the striping on the arms, put the new uh, Stadium Series mock tie-down collar instead of a lace-up, and I also absolutely hated the chromed Black Hawk logo because to me, it just did not look right. And I've seen it in person and I don't know if anybody else has ever felt this way, but I honestly thought that that chromed crest on this Chicago jersey made the jersey look slightly counterfeit. And I was very disappointed when I saw that. And I don't know if anybody else feels that way about it, but I did. And I thought it was a real bummer. And I thought this jersey was disappointing for what it used to be because they took a great jersey as far as I'm concerned and kind of ruined it. But I must say, for, for a one-off, I thought it was nice to see this jersey at least make some kind of comeback. Even though I still think Chicago should make their 2009 Winter Classic jersey their third jersey again. Or at least wear it twice a year as a special throwback at some point in time. But anyways... With this game, I don't know if, I think I mentioned it in my last video, but I wish that the NHL would have let Chicago wear their 50s throwback for this Stadium Series game because that's what Chicago originally wanted to do instead of using it in their Winter Classic game against the Capitals. And I think that would have been better. Like, imagine that jersey against this Penguins jersey in Vegas gold. I think that would have been much a much better looking game than this one that ended up being the case. So anyways, I thought that was a bit of a bummer, but anyways, I'm going to move on. But as I say that though, this matchup actually wasn't all that bad for, for a special one-off or a special pair of one-off jerseys, I should say. But anyways, with that, I'm going to move on to the game between the Rangers and Islanders. And I'm going to start off with the Rangers. So, with this Battle of New York, I thought that the Rangers did a very nice job with their jersey as a special jersey. Now, I would not want to see it make a comeback because they didn't love it. And I did not like seeing the Rangers have a jersey with navy blue side panels on it. But... As I say that, I thought it was really cool that the Rangers made their jersey as a bit of a tribute to the Lady Liberty third jerseys that the Rangers had from the mid-1990s all the way up until 2007. So I thought that was cool. But you know what I thought was the coolest thing about this Rangers jersey? And it, it was that for the very first time in that franchise's history... I did not know this until they brought this jersey out, but did you know that this jersey here is actually the very first Rangers jersey or Rangers white jersey to ever say New York on the front? I was blown away when I heard that because honestly, I thought that with a team that's been around as long as the New York Rangers, that that would have been a case of quote unquote, been there, done that. And I was blown away when I heard that. And as a special one-off, or for a special event, I thought it was actually pretty good. And 
I loved that they finally got new, the words New York on the front of a white jersey. But you know what? I really liked the navy blue, red, gray, and white color scheme for this jersey because I thought it was a pretty sharp look. And if you're like me and you thought that this as a special event jersey was actually, actually pretty decent, um, their farm team, the Hartford Wolfpack of the American Hockey League, actually just unveiled new uniforms based off of this Stadium Series jersey here. So I thought that was pretty cool when I heard that. And actually, the jerseys actually look not too bad. So I thought that was cool, and they're going to be wearing those uh, starting in the upcoming 2016-17 season. So feel free to check those out if you are interested. Anyways, I'm going to move on and talk about the New York Islanders Stadium Series jersey. Now this jersey was is one of my favorite Stadium Series jerseys. And not only was it a huge step and a half up from that black and gray third jersey with the word mark on it, which... I still can't get over that the Islanders even approved that monstrosity. Like, that one commentator was absolutely right. Like, that Islanders third jersey that was black and gray was a total monstrosity. It was awful. And I was so happy to see this jersey replace it because I thought it was actually pretty good. I did not even mind the chrome logo. Like, I thought the chrome logo on that jersey and this Rangers one were actually not too bad. And I thought the chrome to word mark was a clever idea. Forgot to mention that. But yeah, with this Islanders jersey, the white shoulders I thought was nice. It had a nice, it was nice and bright, and it was very colorful, and it wasn't too crazy of a third jersey. And I thought it was actually one of the NHL's better third jerseys when they finally got rid of that black and gray one. But now. They've replaced it with that boring as hell black and white Brooklyn jersey. Like, what the hell were they thinking? Like, if they had to have a black third jersey that bad, because I do understand the method behind the madness since they are now playing in Brooklyn and wanted to kind of cater to the Brooklyn fan, sports fan, but if they had to make a black uniform, why not make a black version of this Stadium Series jersey? It would have been ten times better, better than that ultra boring one they came up with. Like at least it would, at least you'd be able to tell it's the New York Islanders, because their new Brooklyn jersey doesn't even have a single trace of royal blue on it, except for the inside of the collar, and little things like that are kind of why I've honestly grown to dislike some of the hanger effects on, in recent years, and it's things like that that kind of get on my nerves. Oh, we put royal blue on the jersey. No, you didn't. You stuck it on the inside of the freaking collar. Like, seriously, guys. But yeah, anyways, I wish the Islanders would not have retired this jersey. It's way better than that black and gray one. And it's way better than the Brooklyn one that they've replaced this one with, which is a real shame in my opinion. And I just wish they would have made it a black and white version of this Stadium Series one. It would have been way better. And obviously with some royal blue and orange on it which is what they should have done as far as I'm concerned. But anyways, I'm going to move on. So I'm not quite done with the Rangers jersey just yet, because do you notice Henrik Lundqvist's pinstriped goalie equipment that's kind of based off the, of the uh, iconic New York Yankees pinstriped jersey? Well, I've got something interesting to share. So back when they unveiled this jersey, did you know that there were actually some rumors that were surfaced? that surfaced about the Rangers actually considering a prototype that had pinstripes on it instead of the plain white jersey that we see here. They were actually considering making this jersey here, but with New York Yankee pinstripes on it. Which, for a special event jersey, would have been really cool. But, get this. Supposedly, not only did Major League Baseball say no, but also the Yankees vetoed it, and they both did not want the Rangers wearing a pinstriped jersey. But I don't know how accurate that rumor was, so I could be wrong. And if I am wrong, I apologize. Because, sorry. Because, you know, even if it was a false rumor, the idea of this jersey actually possibly 
almost having pinstripes on it is pretty interesting. And it's, you know, I'm, but to be honest, I'm glad that they didn't because I thought this was a pretty sharp looking jersey for a special event. I did not like the side panels, but you know what? I'm glad that they just stuck with plain white instead of pinstripes because I think the white, navy, blue, red, and silver is a pre was a pretty clean, crisp look. And I think New York did a great job with it for a special event jersey. Though, I don't know if I'd necessarily want to see it back unless they made some changes to it. But anyways, I'm going to move on to the Devils one. Oh, and what do you notice about the Devils? This is where it gets interesting because New Jersey actually said no to the NHL and Reeboks push for, for this new stadium series template in, that included a chromed crest, a new jersey template, and a t mock tie-down collar instead of a traditional lace-up. Which, unfortunately, that collar design, even though I thought it wasn't too bad, has been getting overused a little bit now in the NHL in recent years with the new Panther jerseys. Actually, their mock tie's really cool because it kind of mimics the state flag, but anyway. I don't like the way the Avalanche's new third jersey uses it. The Coyotes' new home and away jerseys use it. And I also did not care for... Um, which jersey was it? Um, I didn't really like the mock tie-down laces on the Anaheim Ducks' new Orange Mighty Ducks third jersey. I, I think it would have looked better with a lace-up. But anyways, I'm not going to get too much into that. But I thought it was great that the devil said no. Because not only would it probably not have been that great of a jersey anyway... But you know what? Their red and green throwback is awesome. And I thought it was so nice to see them bring it out for this outdoor game. And hats off to New Jersey for, for doing that. Because I got a confession. I'm not going to lie. I still believe that the New Jersey Devils had the best stadium series jerseys that season. And I, I just I love this jersey. I, I, I think it is such a nice jersey. I really do. And I don't know how many people agree with me or don't agree with me, but that's fine if they don't. But I just, I thought it was such a nice jersey. I, I absolutely love it. It's a great jersey. But you know what? As I say that, this was one special outdoor game. And as much as I think they could have maybe slapped the chrome, chromed crest on the throwback if they were going to say no to a new jersey, no pun intended, but you know what? They could have slapped a chromed crest, but I'm so glad that they didn't because this jersey's awesome and it looks way better without it. Anyways, hats off to New Jersey. I'm going to move on yet again to the 2014-15 season's only stadium series game between the Kings and the Sharks. So, Los Angeles got to play in a second straight stadium series game, or for a second straight season, sorry. So, this jersey compared to the one they wore the first time around was not even close to being as good. I thought this jersey was awful. The top heavy and gray, the white bottom, the white shorts, and the white tops on the socks kind of made this jersey look like a pajama outfit. It looked like a pajama suit. I thought the players at times were, were looking like they were wearing pajamas, and I just did not like this jersey whatsoever. But one thing I did like about it, though was that they brought the white pants back for the first time since the 1970s Washington Capitals, and I don't even think the white shorts that they brought out even made it to a regular season game. They only used those in the preseason in their very first season in the NHL. And I thought it was nice to see the white shorts make a comeback. But I'm glad that the Kings and... No, So far, no other teams have brought them back since. But anyways, I hated this Kings jersey. I thought it was terrible. And, you know, one thing that I did not hate about this jersey was the carbon fibered LA logo. I, I liked that it was a little bit toned down from the shininess of the chromed crests. But I must say... I thought that the carbon fiber made these both logos really, really dull. And even though you don't notice it as much on the King's logo here, 
On San Jose's logo, on the other hand, I thought it looked really, really dull. Though it wasn't terrible for a special event jersey, but I would definitely not want to see that carbon fiber treatment done to a logo again on an NHL sweater. But anyways, with this Sharks jersey, I thought it was way better than the Kings one. And honestly, I, I liked that it had more of a look to it than their current home and away jerseys because they're way too plain. Like when they switched from their 2007-2008 jerseys with the shoulder yokes on them, it's almost, I almost felt that the Sharks decided to hop into a time machine and go back to 2007 and pull those out. Like, I was extremely disappointed when San Jose did that, and I thought it was nice to see a jersey with a more complete look to it. But as I say that, both jerseys had the oversized numbers on the arms. They introduced those, and I don't like those, even though I do get the method behind the madness, because, hey, it's a stadium series game. Duh, it's in a stadium. But I also did not like the collars on here, which you can't, it's tough to see them here, but I hated how they just had these huge tabs on them with the NHL logo on them, and I hated how the Sharks collar had orange on it, but nowhere else on the jersey. And I hated both of these uniforms for the most part, and I hated the collar design, and I'm so glad that so far it has not made a comeback as of yet. But with this Sharks jersey, I, I feel like these two jerseys started the trend of half-finished jerseys in the NHL in recent years with the Avalanche's new Rockies-inspired third, the Islanders' new black-and-white third, the Panthers' new home-and-away jerseys. And, yeah, I mean, I just, I feel, and also the Coyotes' new home-and-away jerseys, and I don't like this half-finished look. Like, the Kings had the black stripe on the front, but it didn't go all the way around. And the Sharks had the white and black on the front, but on the back is just plain teal. Like, what the heck is up with that, guys? Like, if the jersey if the jersey had black and white going all the way around it, it would have looked so much better. And the Sharks could have actually made that their third jersey, in my opinion. But also, see what I mean about the black tops on the socks? It kind of gives them a bit of a long pant look kind of and I wish the teal would have and the black on the socks would have been flipped around I think that would have been a lot better but anyways I thought this was a downgrade from the prior season's stadium series uh, jerseys and I also I did I did not like the fact that these kind of set the tone for these new half finished designs we've been starting to see in the NHL in the past couple of seasons since this game but anyways I'm going to move on to this past season's Stadium Series games. So, I'm gonna start off, <clears throat> I'm gonna start off with the Avalanche and the Red Wings. Now, this Avalanche jersey here, I thought it was good that Colorado finally had a cleaner looking jersey, but I was really disappointed when they took the state flag C with the O in the center off the state flag and slapped it on as the main crest. It should have been their main logo on the front. It would have been 10 times better. And I also don't like how this, how the stadium series has been kind of really pushing this whole state city pride business. I'm not a big fan of it so far. But one thing that I did like about this past season Stadium Series jerseys was that they finally did not have any crest gimmicks. They finally did not have a chromed crest. No chrome, no carbon fiber. Just regular logos for change. And I hope that is a permanent thing now with the Stadium Series. And as for this Detroit jersey, Jesus H. Christ, what the hell were they thinking? The Detroit Red Wings, am, am, I, am I seeing that right? The Detroit Red Wings have a big diagonal sash on the front with big oversized numbers and white cuffs on the jersey and nothing but plain red on the back? Huh? Is this the Red Wings we're talking about here? See what I mean? It just doesn't seem right. Like, to me, seeing Detroit with a jersey as radically different and untraditional as this is just not right. Like if any other team that wasn't an older franchise like a Florida or a Columbus or a Tampa Bay or something like that. 
if I saw a newer team do something as creative as a sash, I don't think it would have been as bad. But seeing an original six franchise with two of the nicest jerseys in hockey come out with this, I thought was absolutely nuts. Seriously. But for one game, it was kind of neat. But I just don't think, I just, honestly, I just did not feel right. It just did not feel right to me seeing the Red Wings with such a radically different jersey. But I must say, I think that the logo they came up with was really, really nice. That I will give it credit for. Now here's a look at the jerseys on the ice. Like Colorado's was actually quite clean and I really liked that. But as I said before, I wish they would have stuck their primary logo on the front. It would have been way better, especially if it had a matching, especially if these gray and burgundy stripes were also around the waist. Like that would have been a decent jersey. But as a one-off jersey, I thought this one actually wasn't too bad besides that. But as for Detroit, what the hell were they thinking? Oh, and did you know that actually, did you know that Reebok actually gave the Red Wings some more traditional prototype uniforms to consider? But Detroit was actually the ones, the Red Wings were actually the ones that declined those to go in favor with it. Or pardon me, to go... They were the ones that approved this uniform, which I thought was a huge mistake. Like, notice the whole red pants, red so tops on the socks, mainly red un underneath the sash. Like, it looked kind of like red capris. And I kind of wonder where the white gloves came from. Like, who approved that? I thought that wasn't very good. And it just see what I mean? This The Red Wings wearing a jersey like this just doesn't look right. I mean, for one game in the, and never wearing it again, I guess it's not the end of the world, but honestly, for a team like Detroit, they should have done something better. And if I had my way, all I would have done is I would have taken this Red Wings logo right here, which is a better picture of it, and I would have slapped it on the front of this special red jersey that was created for the alumni game in the 2014 Winter Classic between the Wings and the Leafs. Like, not only would that would have been a better choice because it would have given the Red Wings a more traditional look, but it would have given them a chance to, to do something new with this really, really good logo. Stick it on the front of this, and it would have been a decent jersey. It would have been perfect for an original six team such as Detroit. And I think it's such a shame that Detroit even approved this and wore it. But one thing I also did not like was this new overlapping collar design. I do not like it. Like, I don't know what is going on with some of these new collar designs, but I'm definitely not a fan of this one. And another thing that I don't like is these new collar word marks. Like, that's one thing, that's one of the only things that I hate about Anaheim's new third jersey. Would have looked so much better without a word mark on the collar. But as I say that, that's a huge nitpick on my part. But see what I mean about this overlapping collar? Just not a fan of it. And overall, I just hope and pray that Detroit never goes with a jersey as crazy as this ever again. But anyways, I'm going to finish my video covering the, my absolute favorite stadium series game in terms of jerseys to date. And that's between Chicago and Minnesota this past season. So I want to start off with the Wild because they have the best stadium series jersey to date besides the minute, besides the New Jersey Devils throwback in my opinion. Because this jersey has such a nice traditional look to it for the most part. And if they would get rid of the overlapping collar, the oversized numbers, and stick a matching pair of stripes like the arms around the waist, not only would that with a lace-up collar be a great third jersey, but I actually think it would be a spectacular home jersey, especially with a matching vintage white jersey. And even if they made it white instead of vintage white, I think that with a, this with in white instead of beige with a matching white road jersey would be fantastic. And I hope somebody from the Minnesota Wild is watching this video and takes my advice, because Minnesota would have two of the better jerseys in the NHL if they did that. And even a, even a green j version of their road jersey would be a huge step up from what they're wearing now. 
and I thought this wild jersey was such a nice jersey. It should at least replace their current green third jersey with the word mark on it. And it's a shame that it's not going to, at least so far. And I hope it does make a comeback, or at least sets the tone for some new home and away jerseys for Minnesota. Goodness me. But anyways, to finish this video off, I want to talk about Chicago. Now, to be honest, I thought this jersey was better than the 2013-14 season Stadium Series 1 that they went with. And I liked that it was a little bit more traditional. But the problem that I had with this jersey was these oversized arm stripes. Like, I wish they would have just had arm stripes and a waist stripe that were the exact same as their road jersey with the Tomahawk C logo on the shoulders and the shoulder numbers back on the arms where they should be. That, with a lace-up collar, instead of this overlapping collar with a state flag design on the one half of it, would have been much better in my opinion. And even a black version of that, of this jersey with those changes, with the matching stripes like the road jersey with the Tomahawk C shoulder logo on the shoulders instead of the arms, and same with the shoulder numbers being on the arms instead of the logo, this with a lace-up, or a black version of it would actually be a really nice jersey as well. But one thing I loved about this Chicago jersey was that with the black shoulder yoke, I thought it was a bit of a tribute to the early 30s, or to the early jerseys of Chicago's um, history. Because they started off with black and white jerseys that had a whole bunch of stripes on the shoulders, and I thought that was a bit of a small nod to that. So yeah, I mean, this Chicago jersey for a one-off was much better than the 2013-14 Stadium Series one, in my opinion. And if it had the striping like their road jersey, the Tomahawk C's on the shoulders, the shoulder numbers on the arms, and a lace-up collar instead of this overlapping collar that's half black and half white that's got the state flag stars on it, with a lace-up collar, I think this would have actually been a really nice Stadium Series jersey. And a black version of that, that's just a reverse of what I've mentioned here, would have been a really nice third jersey even down the road. But anyways, with that, that's it for this video. And I do apologize for the length of it, as well as how long it took to finally get this video uploaded. And it's such a shame that my computer's been having the difficulties that it's been having. But anyways... I'm hoping to get more videos up in the not too distant future now that I've resolved those problems finally. But anyways, until I make another video, as always, take care and bye for now. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video and sorry for the delay. Anyways, as always, take care.